once you have set up your target ACOS, it is now time to jump into the automation tab. From the automation tab, you're going to be able to manage two types of rule automation. Automation for bid rules and automation for keyword harvesting or keyword rules. Let's start with bid rules. Whenever you enter the automate tab in Sedlex, you're going to see two types of buckets, just like this one. One is going to have a gold wand right here. The gold one stands for auto campaigns. This is where you're going to write your rules and automation for auto campaigns. Otherwise, you could see a green man, just like this one. The green man represents manual campaigns, and this rule sets, this bucket, is designed for rules to automate manual campaigns. Let's not focus too much on the difference between the two buckets, but let's focus on the rules themselves. Whenever you log in in your Celex account for the first time, you're going to see two rules. This is what I like to refer to as your bread and butter rules. They follow a simple logic, a simple strategy that can go a long way in managing your bids effectively. If your ACoS is above your target by, let's say, 5% after 1.5x clicks, decrease the aggro bid by 20%, with a minimum bid being $0.05. Cents. The logic here is that if your ACoS is above your target, you're not very sales efficient. And in that case, you want probably to decrease your bid to try to get your cost under control. The opposite is also true. So if ACoS is below your target, that means you're very sales efficient. And you could benefit after 1.5x clicks to increase your bid to get incremental sales. In this case, this rule will increase your bid by 20% with a maximum bid being $1.25. As you can see, all of these buckets can be edited. We have 5% here, we have 2.5% here, 20% or 10%. The point of this is, rules in Sedlex are very transparent and we want you to customize these rules so that you can achieve your goals and execute your strategy. Ideally, the rules will do what you want to do, so spend some time understanding how to customize these for your strategy. The percentage range is really up to you to decide, and it's a, the most important thing to look at. Let's say that your ACoS is 20% and your average ACoS is 25. Would you lower the bid? If your answer is yes, then 5% is a good threshold for you. Now, let's look at another case scenario. What if your ACoS is 24%, but your target is 20? Would you decrease the bid? If your answer is again yes, then the threshold you should go for is probably 4%. However, if it seems too soon, then 5% was a better number. Put yourself in the context. Ask yourself, what would you do? And then set up the rules to do exactly that. Let's now look at the action that we're triggering, right? either decrease the bid or increase the bid by a certain percentage. I always recommend to start low, maybe around 20%. Then you're going to be able to review the changes made by automation and decide for yourself, are the bid changes too aggressive or too conservative? Where do you want to be? And then edit this percentage yourself. Another aspect to consider is your max bid. Remember, if your bids happen to be higher than your max bid already, then the automation rule will not trigger an increase in the bid, not even if your ACoS is much lower than your target. Make sure that you pick a max bid at least higher than your average bid to have some effect. Lastly, we need to look at a trigger variable. These variables, the one in the middle, determine how long each rule will wait before triggering. Because we're handling PPC or pay-per-click advertising, clicks is a very good way to measure time. Now, every session will have a bit of a different sales cycle or how many clicks it needs in order to convert. You can use the Sedlex X system to make sure that you're always waiting the right number of clicks. 
The Celix X system is this advanced calculation that will look at your live conversion rate to calculate how many clicks to wait. For example, if your conversion rate is 10% for a search term, that means that, statistically speaking, on average, every 10 clicks, you get an order. In this case, Celix will wait 1.5 times 10 clicks or 15 clicks. Depending on whether you want to be faster in your changes or more accurate, you can select a different threshold, 1x, 1.5x, or 2x. In this case, in 2x, if your conversion rate is 10%, 10 clicks on average to get an order, Sally is going to wait 2 times 10, 20 clicks. I recommend using the 1.5x to start. However, if you don't like the X system, you would prefer to use a hard number of clicks, you can always enter a number of clicks that you prefer, let's say 20. Remember, you will also be able to write your own rules in Celix Automation. You can always click on Add New Rule and write a rule with whatever variable you want. Your main variable can be ACOS, Spend, Revenue, Cost Per Click, Impressions, Click Through Rate, Conversion Rate, Clicks and Orders. Your trigger can be Spend, Revenue, Impressions, Clicks, Orders and Days. And you can always pick the action that you want to trigger, either increase the bid or decrease the bid. Now that you know the basics of rule automation and how it works, and also what each component of the rules does, it is time to enroll your ad groups in each bucket. Click on the orange tab to select which auto campaigns are you going to enroll in these two rules. You can either select all or specific ad groups. Remember, it is important that you have a target ACOS inputted, otherwise automation will not start. You're all set with bid automation. In the next video, we will cover the idea of keyword harvesting before jumping into keyword rules in Celix.